Welcome to this introductory talk on the Geography A-Level course offered at OSH. Um, if you have any questions from this, you can contact Mr Parker and his email address has been provided with some of the supplementary materials. Um, and likewise, this, this talk will probably last about 15 minutes or so. So for the remaining time before the, uh, the next, uh, next um, video, what you should probably do is have a look at some of the materials that have been suggested uh, and just start getting a bit of a flavour for them. So at OSH we offer the Edexcel A-Level Geography course and we'd recommend that you go online and have a look at the specification for it. The reason why Mr Parker and Mr Williams have chosen to do the Edexcel specification is that it focuses in on, th focuses in on three different areas. So um, it, it tries to make sure that students are, are aware of the current af affairs that are really impacting geography at the moment and the, the ones which are going to impact geography on the, the forthcoming um, generations. So population, climate change um, and uh, the growth of, of mega cities is a big focus for the Edexcel exam board. So you'll learn about that as part of the course. Secondly, um, you'll be, be focusing really on a skill-based A-level, so you'll look at teamwork analysis, ICT, communication, literacy, numeracy, research, particularly in that fourth unit, which is the non-exam assessment. And finally, um, the, the course is specifically designed so that it can help with people going into certain uh, careers. Geography is one of our most popular subjects currently with year 12 going into year 13, um, and perhaps the reason for that is because the, the course can be used for all manner of different jobs, all manner of different careers, and it combines well with pretty much all subjects. So if you're looking to do other humanities-based subjects, there's a certain degree of overlap. With scientific-based subjects, there's a certain degree of overlap as well. Uh, geography is that unique course where it is a humanities-based subject, but it's also striving for objectivity, um, and therefore it has that, that balance between a, a science and uh, objective-based study um, and the subjectiveness of of a humanities based subject. The, the course is divided into four different units but you'll notice that on the screen we're only focusing in on papers one and two. The reasons for that is, is paper four or unit four is the non-exam assess uh, assessment and paper three is a synoptic based uh, paper and that's something that you do in year 13 once you've looked at all the content for paper one and two. Now there are a few different options that you can study for papers uh, one and two um, and uh, the decisions that Mr Parker and Mr Williams have come to are on the, the screen now and so I'm just going to talk about um, some of the topics that you'll be covering in papers one, two and in that synoptic element of paper three. So firstly one of the, the big topics that you'll be looking at particularly in year 12 for paper one are tectonic processes and hazards. So you'll be looking at why some locations in the world, partic uh, particularly those around the Pacific Rim, are more at risk from tectonic hazards. Um, why do these particular tectonic hazards develop into disasters and, and really how successful certain countries are uh, in their management of these tectonic hazards and disasters? Uh, if we're looking at specific examples, Japan would be an interesting one for you to have a look at in preparation um, and how they, they're preparing for um, some of the tectonic hazards that come from earthquakes, including tsunamis. As part of paper one as well, you'll also look at glaciated landscapes. Now, this is one of the options that you can uh, you can look at as part of the, the edXL A-level course. And, and really, this is a really important one if we're focusing in on that issue of climate change, because climate change is having a direct impact on the formation uh, and the continuation of, of glaciated landscapes. So we'll look at what processes operate within glacier systems, um, how uh, glacial processes contribute to the formation of glacial landforms and, and landscapes, um, and how they are managed today. So if you're looking for a bit of additional research and, and trying to get ahead, it might be useful to look at areas of, of South America like Patagonia, it might be useful to look at Iceland as well. Um, glaciated landscapes and change um, is a, a tricky concept to get your head around, but it's one that the, the department at OSH specialise in. For paper two, and something that you'll be looking at in year 12, is this, this big topic of, of human geography, uh, which is globalisation. And if you're studying economics as well, if you're studying history, if you're studying business, there is a certain degree of overlap. But in geography, it forms the, the basis of one of the major units of, of study. So we're looking at why um, globalisation has, has really been this, this key buzzword over the past 50 years or so and why it's accelerated in recent decades. We're going to look at the impacts of globalisation for specific countries, different groups of peoples, cultures for example, um, and trying to think about where globalisation is going to go next. 
So how should different players, uh, you know, key stakeholders respond to the challenges of globalization? It'd be really interesting to look at this particular unit in, um, in a post-COVID-19 approach or, or a, a current COVID-19 approach, because if you're looking at China, for example, in America, um, it's interesting to see America are becoming increasingly um, isolated under their, their president um, and, and how they want to perhaps go for this approach of autarky whereas China China's um, um, desire to to create a um, you know almost a Chinese empire based on services is a real hot topic in in this globalization study for paper two as well, you'll be looking at regenerating places and a really good example to look at for this would be Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham, which had a reputation you know, 20, 30 years ago as, as being quite dilapidated, being quite run down, and how successful the regeneration has perhaps been um, in the different quarters of Birmingham and this quarter idea that they had. You'll look at different examples and there will be field work as part of that. Uh, you can see that they've got some of the geography students there by the bull ring. Um, Regeneration as well as this this word is how how do we decide which areas need regenerating? What kind of field studies do we need to conduct in order to ensure that the regeneration is going to be feasible? Um, as part of papers one and two as well, you'll also cover a, a number of different topics. You'll be looking at the water cycle, water insecurity. You'll have a good understanding about um, flooding, uh, flood defences. Uh, so that will hopefully continue on from some of the content that you looked at GCSE study. You'll be looking at the carbon cycle uh, and energy and if you're doing chemistry or physics for example in combination with geography this can be really really useful um, when you're looking at that so we'll be trying to think about how the world can perhaps become uh, more green in its in its energy approaches whether or not that's needed um, to a certain level um, it's it's part of this overall uh, approach of, of looking at climate change as well. And as I've alluded to as well, we'll be looking at the superpowers for paper two. So that's part of your globalization study. So having a good understanding about how China works, how America works, how they've uh, expanded into the world's superpowers would be a really useful exercise um, for, you, for you to do over the summer. So if you've got a bit of time, it might be useful to, to bookmark um, this Netflix series, which I think is called History 101. And there's a specific ep episode on that called The Rise of China. And it's talking about how China's economy boomed um, in the 1990s and why it was able to, to really emerge as this, this um, superpower uh, and really how it's going to overtake America in the next few years. Also in paper two, you'll look at this uh, this topic, which is it really shows the breadth of geography and and the, the the range of different areas that you'll have to consider. So you'll look at migration, identity, and sovereignty. So if you're doing politics as well as one of your subjects, or perhaps you're not going to do politics but you're interested, this particular component for paper two is is really really relevant at the moment. Looking at independence movements, so things like the Catalonia independence movement, the uh, the current Brexit scenario, uh, the rise of nationalism and populism, and they all you know, integrate into this paper two study. So hopefully you've got a bit of a flavour about what papers one, two and three will cover. Uh, but it's also worth pointing out that you'll have to do an independent investigation, which makes up 20% of your overall course. Now this is a field work based exercise. It'll be interesting to see what happens over the next two years in a, in a COVID-19 world. Uh, because um, at the moment there's currently discussions about how field work can operate within geography but for, for the purposes of you and, and hopefully we would we would hope that you would have the opportunity to do this field work is is something that um, students do have to, to, to get involved in and um, they will have to evidence independent analysis and evaluation of data and that's where we're looking at the, the objectivity that geography tries to reach as well but you'll have to supplement that with extended writing so this is a really useful exercise and um, if you look at one of the other videos um, about co-curricular options as well you'll find something called the EPQ and a lot of geography students do the EPQ because they find that if they've done their independent investigation for geography it has a um, it's quite straightforward to, to approach the EPQ in a similar sort of way. So as I've alluded to already the department comprises of two members of staff uh, Mr Parker and Mr Williams and um, the, the the setup of the department is is pretty crystal clear you know it's 
they've got their own specialties but they do work together um, and really the, the numbers which you can see on that screen uh, speak for themselves. Geography is one of our, of our most successful departments when it comes to um, uh, success for, for data. So if you're looking at last year, for example, 65% of students got an A star, uh, an A or a B, and 25% got an A star and an A. Considering that you know we don't have huge cohorts of students, that's a very impressive um, record. And you can see going back, um, that that is a con you know continuation year on year. So you know every single year we have this consistent track record of strong results. The field trips are integrated throughout the course as well, and um, they're a useful exercise to bring students together. Uh, myself, I did geography at A level, and and I'll remember my field um, studies trips. A uh, great way of of making new friends, but also understanding how these skills work in, in the real environment. Um, and it's also worth pointing out as well that the department has really strong links to the Royal Geographical Society. Mr. Williams is a, a chartered member um, and as a result it means that the department is able to get guest speakers to come in. So this past year we've had um, some guest speakers come in and speak to the geography students. It, it's also testament to the department that a lot of students tend to choose geography as a subject that they wish to pursue at undergraduate level. The requirements for the subject at OSH, um, you need to meet the overall entry requirements of 7 pass grades and you need to have studied geography at GCSE and you need to have got a grade 5 as a minimum. Those desirable traits though um, really are, are show that, show that uh, again the breadth of geography as a subject. You need to be able to embrace new challenges, you're going to be taken out of your comfort zone for field studies work and um, you need to be a keen reader and um, the great thing about geography is that you can use examples to support your point from a whole host of different areas so you can procrastinate um, on a number of different websites like National Geographic for example and, and the Geography Now pages and you can take some of those examples and bring them into to all your essays so being a keen reader is important for the subject. Having confidence at writing extended essays because that will be a, a, a component of all your papers and a thirst for new knowledge. Geography is all about this desire to find out more about the world around us so you know being passive and and just sitting there and hope, you know, hoping that the teachers will just pass you the information that you need to go for the exam will only take you really so far for A level. You really need to be um, having that desire to go out and, and find new information about the subject. And the benefit of geography is geography is everything. It's the study of the world. So, you know, you can bring in examples from absolutely anything. One that I, I say to students um, when, when we talk about geography is when I did A-level geography, um, we were doing a study on migration uh, and I happened to talk in, in my final exam about Zlatan Ibrahimovic and the, the impact of Balkan migrants in Sweden. You know, that's that's the kind of specificity that you can go to and if you've got that first for knowledge, um, you can bring in any examples in your, in your uh, essay uh, questions. As I've alluded to already, uh, geography is a great subject at combining with um, you know the sciences but also the humanities so you can see Ben, Tom, Max, Ollie and, and Dan here they've you know they've got a range of different subjects that they've combined it with and you can see that the pathways that they've gone into are, are relatively varied you've got geography, business, physics, architecture going straight into employment in the land estate and property management sector um, and you can see as well that you know in the case of Tom and Ben they've also combined that with an EPQ because geography and, and the EPQ well, the geography NEA component and the EPQ are, are very closely linked. So, um, you know, in terms of what you can combine geography with, I think it's one of the few subjects where you could say that you could comfortably combine it with absolutely anything. So, as with all these videos, um, there is an expectation over the summer for you to be doing a certain amount of reading and a certain amount of work to prepare you for September study. And likewise, there are essential tasks. And in the case of geography, there is one task. So, Mr. Parker and Mr. Williams have been very clear. They don't want you to have lots of, of mini tasks. They want you to focus in on one thing and get that one thing right. So the first thing that we would suggest that you do is you go onto um, the geography.org.uk website and there is a section there saying preparing for A-level geography and we would suggest that you familiarise yourself with that website and have a specific look at topic areas that we've alluded to in this video uh, that you know are going to be on that Excel specification that you might have a, a certain degree of knowledge on from your GCSE study. So in the case of the water cycle for example you should have a good idea overall about flood defences. It might be a good idea to look at what 
you know how that will progress into A level study. You can also go on to Seneca and uh, we would suggest that you look at the Geography AQA GCSE page. It's not the Edexcel A level course, but it will give you a, a grounding in some of those areas if you haven't looked at geography for a number of uh, months now. It's important, as we've already said in this particular talk, that you broaden your subject horizons for the subject. It's so important for, for any humanities based subject. A really good website to start off with for that is National Geographic. You can bookmark that on your, your internet browser um, and you can start reading the articles that they keep updating with. So they're, they're very current, they're very recent, and the more current and recent you are and, and you're able to apply those particular examples into your essays, the better you will do at A-level standard. So for example, just going on to National Geographic this week, there's an article about American tourists are banned from Europe but not these countries. Um, and it'd be interesting to see why American tourists have been banned in the first place that would impact on our you know our studies in paper 2 for globalization and migration perhaps YouTube has some amazing um, subscriber accounts that you can go on to the one with the logo on, on the screen is geography now geography now it goes into specific countries and it delves into a really uh, deep way so it looks at it from a physical perspective a human perspective if you're looking at tectonic processes and tectonic hazards it'd be useful to pick out some of those um, those Pacific Rim nations and find out a little bit more about that so there's a really good one for example on on Papua New Guinea and, and Vanuatu um, which are right on the Pacific Rim and, and thinking about what defenses and, and management perhaps they need to, to have in order to be fully secure um, there's also some great podcasts and you can see them in the, the supplementary materials so as I've already mentioned, uh, there is one task that Mr. Williams and Mr. Parker would like you to do for your uh, bridging task for geography. So what, what you need to do is you need to complete a critical review of two newspaper or online articles. And, and really that feeds into what we've been saying throughout this video for geography, that the more reading you do, the more examples you'll get, the stronger you will be as a candidate for success. Now, you should choose one from each of the groups below. So try and choose an article that relates to something from group A and then one from group B. So you should be choosing one from regenerating places, water issues, water insecurity, migration, sovereignty and identity, and then another article from superpowers, globalization or the carbon cycle. Um, you, the article should be from a reputable source and you need as part of this exercise to find out what makes something reputable. I've already alluded to National Geographic, that is a reputable source so that might be a starting point if you need it, um, but it needs to really be from an established news organisation which is, is relatively free from vested interest or a strong vested interest. You need to make sure as well that you reference the source as part of your review so that you can engage with that with Mr Williams and Mr Parker. The articles need to be related to and focused on the above topics, but they don't need to necessarily have the, the words specifically mentioned in the title. So for example, you might find an article on the Birmingham Mail website, which is about the regeneration process that's taking place um, around Paradise Circus, um, but it might not use that word regeneration. You've got to engage with some of those key words to find out maybe what you're looking for in the first place. It's up to you what you identify as articles. They don't have to just be from uh, England, um, they can be from all over the world. Um, and for each of them as part of this critical review, you should be thinking about the following five things. Explain the range of geographical concepts and ideas that are outlined in the article. So pick out those key definitions, make sure that you define them, you've got them ready. Assess the effectiveness of the use of data and factual material to support the points made by the author. So what we're looking for here is a persuasive uh, account, a persuasive uh, article. How are they able to support their, their argument? So if they're saying, for example, that this place is, has not necessarily got a, um, a strong regeneration plan or the regeneration plan is ineffective, then you need to make sure that um, you've critically engaged with that and you've decided whether they've supported their arguments sufficiently. You should evaluate how reliable and um, effective those sources of information are. So are they, you know, is the author using reliable accounts? This is, is part of this overall approach of looking at, um, uh, as a critical thinker, considering the effectiveness of the information that's presented by an author. 
fourthly, do you agree with the article? Do you agree with the view that's being presented here? And then finally, what sort of information included in the article do you think would be useful for you to study A-level geography? So this is a, a bridging test different to perhaps some of the other subjects, but what it's really emphasizing to you all is the importance of reading. And if you start that in the summer, uh, and this is an essential test you need to complete this for September, if you start this now, it will be a huge advantage for you. It says that there's no word limit there, probably as a minimum though we should be looking at a page for each particular critical review. You can design it however you want as well, but that should be submitted for the first lesson uh, in September. Thank you very much for listening and what I'd suggest that you do whilst you're waiting for the next video is you start looking now, you start looking at National Geographic Geography now and start thinking about some of the, um, the articles that you might wish to have a look at.